So thank you for all your kindnesses. Now, I, I have a heart for teenagers, okay? And being with Mrs. Evans, in the last probably five years of her life, she really tried to stress the importance of reaching young people. I'm not talking to people that just have teenagers in their home, but let me see. Who has a teenager in your home right now? <gasps> wow, a lot of you. Aren't you scared? Uh, you need that book, Called or Crazy. You really do need to, need to teach you how to work with these young people. Then, how many of you have teenagers in your life in one way or another? Raise your hand. See, we're all affected by them. Now, would the teenagers, I know you get embarrassed very easily, but would you stand for me, all the teenagers that are in the room right now? I'd like you to give them a hand for coming to a meeting like this. Woo, woo, woo. Wonderful, wonderful. Now, let me ask you one more question. Teenagers, I, please, could you stay standing? I need two teenagers that would be willing to come up here and say, ask, answer one easy, easy question. Two teenagers. One, two, right over, oh, oh, right over there. She, go ahead, come on up here in the brown, okay? I'm going to give you a present back at the, the Christian Wounded table if you'll, but I just want to ask you one question. I want to try to show you something very important. Thank you so much. Now, I want you all to think about what is your greatest, what is your favorite memory of being with your mom? Okay, now think about it for a second. Okay, now what would, you got anything? Not yet. It's coming. Booba, booba, booba. Each moment that I spend with my mom. <laughs> Isn't that sweet? Thank you. You come back and see me and I'll give you that present. Have you thought of something? Yeah, shopping with her. Uh, she uh, always gives me money. She always what? She helps me buy, like, figure out what clothes I get. Oh, good. Thank you so much. You come back and see me back there, okay? Now, wonderful. <laughs> Consistently, as we ask teenagers that, it's always that. Yet here we are as mothers and adults saying, I don't know how to talk to this kid. Do you know what I'm saying? So I'd like to talk to the teenagers for the first two points. And the next uh, four points are for the ladies, okay? And I really would like you to take notes because I think that if you'll write these points down, I think it'll help you. Okay, Proverbs 10.28 says, Proverbs 10.28 says, The hope of the righteous shall be gladness. I wonder if part of the reason why we have rebellious teenagers in our churches is because they don't have gladness in their heart. You know, they, it, it's very hard for them to have gladness. Do you know how, how they're going to have gladness in their heart? If somebody directs them. I, I have talked about Proverbs chapter 2 where it talks about discretion shall lead thee. Discretion is judgment. Teenagers don't have good judgments. Judgment is learned. It's a learned thing. They need to be directed by all of us. Now, you teenagers, these first two points are for you, and this is what I want you to understand. If you are, remember what I said yesterday? If you're right with, if you love God, and you're trying to do your best for him, and you're yielded to serve him, these two points are for you. If you have no heart for God, and you don't care about him, and you want to live your own life, these two points are not for you. Number one, the first point is... Um, you will be able to do tomorrow what you can't do today. If, you're, if you feel like you're not successful. You know what happens to us ladies, I hope you all realize this, is your teenagers around you, right now they're being measured, their success is being measured by number one, academics, right? Number two, it's being measured by their ability if you have a school big enough to have cheerleading or uh, some kind of a sports, you know, any, some kind of a program like that where they'd be able to get involved. Number three, sometimes they're being measured by popularity. How unfair. But that's really true. Uh, many t I've told teenagers this story many, many times. When I was teaching school, uh, I had a young man that I, even with me tutoring him, I think I'm a pretty good teacher, even with me tutoring him, he still just made D's. I mean, it was re school, was academics were really hard for him. There's some people that just aren't, aren't natural students. Now, you girls that are listening, I'm not giving you a... I'm not giving you a, a card to say you can just fail your classes. You're supposed to do your best, always. Good, better, best. Never let it rest. Till your good is better and your better is best. I'm, you're supposed to be doing your best. You know, that's always what you're supposed to be doing. But I am saying that sometimes we measure so much kids by that. Well, do you know what that young man's doing right now? He's driving a BMW, doing electricity in downtown Chicago. You know why? Because he liked to work with his hands. 
You know, and so that's sometimes what you can't do. I didn't know how to dress when I was in high school. Oh, if you see my pictures, oh, I look like a boy, long, straight hair, you know, my face. No, I, you know, I didn't know how to put makeup on, you know. People have taught me these things. I hope they've done a good job teaching it to me. <laughs> well, wait a minute. I hope I've done a good job learning these things. But do you know what I'm saying? If you don't feel like you're pretty now, I think that some, so how many of you admit you were uglier as a young person than you are now as an adult? I, me, I, I got my hand up. I should put both hands up. You know, so you can, we'll be able to do tomorrow, which you will be a success in that area of life tomorrow. If you'll keep serving God and, and pleasing him with your life. Second point for the teenagers. Now, this is very, very important. You mothers, listen to what I'm saying to them. I'm encouraging them in the Lord because I want their heart to be full of gladness. And every day, you that work with teenagers, when you come into the church, you should be looking for a teenager that you can encourage and bring gladness in their heart. They need gladness. You know, what you want to do is watch over them and say, no, don't do that. No, do not. And you give them all the list of no's. The no's, they, they'll, we, we'll keep working at the no's. But they can take those no's so much better if we've already put gladness in their heart first. So the second point is, now this is really important. You are doing good if you're trying. You are doing good if you're trying. Now, moms, look. She, if she cannot clean a room to please you, do you know whose fault that is? Read Mrs. Evans' book, Kids Without, Kids Without Character. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> Kids with, Without Chaos. I always say that, Mrs. Cowling. <laughs> Kids Without Character. No, it's Kids Without Chaos. There's a whole chapter on there on tempering your child's personality. She, Mrs. Evans always told me that the reason why my child was not successful in a certain area is because I didn't emphasize it enough. It was my training. She always put it back on me. You say, I don't want to be that much of a failure, Loretta. Well, you know, just try, just try to keep work. I've taught her how to clean her room a dozen times. You know, and she goes in there and she half-heartedly does it. And so you get on her again. And then there's the battle begins. And then there's no gladness in either one of your hearts. And nobody likes to be home with two women that are brawling. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So those are the two points for the, for the teenagers. Now... Number one for the ladies. And teenagers, as you listen to this, you are not allowed to go home and say, don't you remember what Mrs. Walker said in that meeting? You know, you go home and be what you're supposed to be first. See, everybody has the opportunity of fixing a relationship by doing better themselves. I learned this in, in, a, in college. In a, in a dorm room meeting with Mrs. Evans as the dean of women, she went around the room and said, now what can you do to make this room a better place and I wanted to and some of the girls said well if she'd clean her clothes you know instead of going around stinking all and she said I didn't ask you what she could do I said what could you do to make this room a better place when my kids are scrapping you know when they get fighting with each other when you have three kids that live together all the time they're gonna fight a little bit they're human I'll say now Jeannie are you being a good sister I can't fix KW right now but are you being a good sister and I'll say KW KW are you being a good brother you know see what I'm saying we it's so easy for you to place blame why this is not working on everybody else. But you, there is always something that you can change if you're teachable. Okay? So the first one for the moms is leave your world and enter theirs. We've heard it. It's in Redbirds, Rubies, and Rainbows, Ms. Evans' book. All these principles are straight from her. What that means is you're supposed to be interested. Now, I have a 15-year-old daughter. Now, do you know I don't really like to talk about boys anymore? Do you know that? I like to talk about, you know, about producing and uh, what am I going to have for supper. And I like to talk about how we're going to get the schoolwork done. And I, you know, I have all my own list of interests. But do you know what my daughter likes to talk about? Boys. Oh, it's her favorite subject. How many of you teenagers agree with that one? <gasps> yes, yes. Amen, amen. Or the other thing that this young lady over here said was shopping. Do you, I, I'm not bragging on myself because I think I'm a good person. But do you know what I was doing Wednesday afternoon, the day before we came here? Shopping with my daughter because she's, she's grown a little taller and her skirts are too big for her. Oh, to have that kind of a problem again. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so they're really, they're bagging on her and it's uncomfortable. And, and so I said, I've got to do or die. I've got to take her shopping. So I went shopping Wednesday afternoon. And I looked up to heaven and I said, Mrs. Evans, I mean this too, ladies. I'm doing this because you taught me to do it. 
It's my responsibility to take her shopping. I am not a shopper. I have a list. I go in and get it. I get out of the store. You know, that's my, type, that's my kind of shopping. Woohoo! big time, you know? But I, we walked around. They like to look at these Claire's, our afterthoughts, all the earrings and gook and junk and, you know, just look at them. You know, my idea is why go look at it if I don't have the money to buy it? But she doesn't have that philosophy. So I'm leaving her world. I'm leaving my world to enter hers. You know, I can't bring her to my, sometimes I do take her to my world. You know how? We go out to eat. And we split a chef salad together. That's fun. I love to go out and sit, out to eat and sit and eat together. Oh, just talk and somebody pour my coffee for me. Oh, I think it's really neat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I, sometimes I can bring her into my world in that way. But mostly it's my responsibility as the adult to leave my world and enter hers. Okay, so number two, this is a big, 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 big one. Ask questions. The greatest way to lead a teenager is not to tell them what you think. It's to ask them questions to inspire them to think the right thoughts. This is what discretion is. This is how you teach them judgment. Now, let me tell you one of the ways that I have asked questions that are ba- that's a bad way. I said something like, how could you want to wear that? <laughs> what kind of an answer does that require? You know, I are, I'm already giving my opinion with that type of a question. Is that right? Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm trying to, this is really deep, but it's, I don't know if I can get it across to you in the right way. But how could you want to wear that says, that is the most ignorant outfit I've ever seen in my entire life. You know, that's what I'm saying with that type of question. You know what? I really like to speak first and think later. <laughs> you know, I really do. I mean, it's just natural to me to want to talk, you know, and just give it all out. Just lay it on the table and take what you want. And, but when I'm dealing with my children, I'm supposed to think first. And as I think first... Then I can, Mrs. Evans, when, before we get into situations, she'd, we'd sit and talk and she'd say, now this is what we're going to do. And she'd think through questions. When she, we were going to be in a group with a group of people, she you know why gossip happens so many times, Mrs. Rule? It's because we don't plan out what we're going to say before we get into the situation. You know, it's just open mouth, out comes the garbage, you know. But anyway, so, so ask questions like if she came up to me and asked me about an outfit, I'd say, oh, Jeannie, I'd put myself down, I'd say, you know how I am about wearing your colors you know I, and I am a, I, I've, it's one of the, my secrets in my beauty nowadays it's wearing my colors you know I have learned what colors I think I look I think you hear I said I think I look good in and I try to wear those colors so I'd say oh Jeannie you know I'm about colors you know I always think you have to wear your colors but you know you look so cute you know what do you think about that you know and or if it's an if it's an issue with uh, a style of clothes like the short tops you know, I say, now, that, I, I love that. That's this cute shirt. You know, it's really, you know, really in and really neat. Uh, that's one of the things she just bought, one of those little short ones. I said, but now, what are you going to do whenever you have to raise your hands? I'd say something like that to her. You know, that's a thought-provoking question that I'm not trying to lead her as much as I'm just trying to say, what would you do, you know? And so, see what I'm saying? Ask questions. Third one is don't react. Don't react. This is so important. I was talking to a mother recently who said to me her son came home with a bad report card. Now, my, I'm the teacher, you know, in my situation. So when the kids have a bad report card, I have nobody to yell at. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, but in your, most of your all situations, you do have somebody to yell at. And I'm afraid sometimes it's your pride that causes you to react to bad grades. Now, This mother said to me, she said, my son came home and I'd worked with him on spelling. And she said, and he still made an F. And I just said, you've got to do better than that. And she was telling me all this. And I said, well, now how teachable do you feel today? That's what I said to her. And she she said, I wouldn't have come talk to you if I didn't want to learn this. I love that. So I said to her, I said, now, and I said, what did he say when you said, you know, and he said, he, she said to me that the son blamed her, you know, because she didn't study enough with him. And I said, now, let me t- say one thing to you. The reason why he said that to you, the reason why he blamed you for his bad grade is because he was re- reacting. He was defending himself. When you, uh, you get your claws out, like you said, 
When you get out and you start attacking, that child has no choice but to jump back on you, either silently or act if they're a rebellious person and not respectful, they will, they will react ooh, ugly like that. So if you want to have a child that's submissive and has a sweet spirit, then you deal with the child with a sweet spirit. It's, it's as easy as that. Many times when I, I'm not blaming, if you have a rebellious child, I'm not saying it's because the mother's a bad mother. Don't, don't misunderstand me. There's many reasons why there's rebellion in, in a child's heart. I'm just saying if I'm putting all, if I'm not reacting to her, like if she says something about when you're walking down the, we have waiters come and wait on us, and the boy's got an earring in his ear, and Jeannie will lean over me. She don't want her dad to see her saying this, you know, but she'll say, he is really cute, Mom. And I'll say, yeah. You know, I just go, yeah. You know, I want to say, yeah, look at that stupid earring in his ear. You know what I'm saying? That's what I want to say. You know, because I'm always so afraid that she's going to start liking a boy with an earring in the ear and not even look, notice the stupid earring in his ear. You know, you, we moms and you teenagers realize this. It's because we live afraid. We see the mistakes we've already made, and we're trying to keep you from making them. So we react, and we get so scared that we say things we shouldn't say. You ought to cut us some slack. You know what? My daughter does. Sometimes when I do react to her, you know, when I give her a list of four things, and then I think of another thing, I come back and say, Jeannie, can you do that? And she'll look at me like, you know, like that. And I'll say, have I already given you too much? You know, I'll say that to her. We communicate. You know, I've learned, I, I learned how to do this. This is not the natural Loretta. You know, I did not grow up like this, I'll tell you. But I was around somebody that challenged me to be this way. And so when she look, starts looking at me, like that blank look, you know, I call it a teen moment. <laughs> I'll say, I say, what's the matter? And, and she'll say, well, mom, you make, and I've, I've pulled this out of her. I've had her say this to me. Mom, you make me feel stupid when you talk to me like that. That's communication. Now, I want to defend myself. I didn't mean to make you feel stupid. You know, I, but I don't. I just say, well, you know, I don't think you're stupid. See, do you know how much gladness I'm trying to pull in this child's life? Because I want her to serve God. I want to have so much communication with her that there will be no problems in the years to come. This has been since a little child we've talked out problems. When the kids would come up and go, and start whining, and you want to say, oh, quit our whining. You know, and they just, were, they just felt bad, you know what I mean? I'd try to, I'd try to empathize with them. So, number three, three, don't react. Number four, and this is the last one, look at their problems through their eyes and not your own. Look at their problems through their eyes and not your own. Do you know what that means? Some of you have forgotten what it's like to be a teenager. It's been too many years ago. And somehow, when we look back at our teenage years, we look through rose-colored glasses. I try to remember myself as a wonderful daughter. You know, as a great example of a submissive child. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So when a, ch when, uh, when a teenager comes up to you and she, uh, I'm, my mind turns to a situation, we visit all these churches. And my daughter is a very shy-natured person. You know, not like either one of her parents, you know. And so she was in a situation where when she turned a teenager, that was a whole new thing that I had to go through with her. You know, and I'll be honest with you, I get tired of talking to her about it. You know what I mean? Because I just say, get in there and just forget yourself. But I've got to think, this is her problem. It's a very real problem to her, and it's my job to help walk her through that problem. So we were in a church situation, and the, the youth director was having a special meeting during our meeting, and so we let her go to that. She felt comfortable enough, and we do. Mrs. Evans told me I should make sure she felt comfortable enough because she is faced with a new group of people every week. So she counseled me on that. So we let her go to that situation. While she was there, somehow it worked out that she had to sit toward the back. And when she sat toward the back, a girl that was not that great of a girl sat next to her, and she kept trying to pull things out of Jeannie's purse. And then she got ugly with Jeannie because Jeannie wouldn't give her something out of her purse. And, and it was just it was a very hard situation. So when we got in the car to go home uh, after church, she was very quiet in the back seat. And I, I could tell something happened, but I, didn't, I knew we shouldn't talk about it in front of everybody. So when we got home, I said, can you come to my office? That, in, in a trailer, your office is the bathroom. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
So we went in the bathroom, and she just started crying, and we talked it all out. Now, I didn't say, oh, come on, Jeannie, get over it. That girl, you know, she's just a bus kid probably and hardly been in church. You know, I, no, I just let her cry, and I felt bad with her. I didn't try to look through it like the eyes of a 44-year-old woman that's pretty tough. I'm pretty tough. I got thick skin. You know, her skin's still pretty thin. So look at their problems through their eyes. You know, they feel bad about pimples. Mrs. Evans told me I should be very conscientious about pimples. So we're, we're paying $60 every two months for some medicine to get rid of pimples. <laughs> Mrs. Evans, I don't thank you for that one. <laughs> you know what I mean? She taught me to be careful about my son's clothes because he's a little chunkier than most. And now he's 12 years old. I look for the, he, I don't let him wear uh, the, the polo type sh shirts because that, his belly shows. You know what I'm saying? She taught me that, to be careful about that, to find a style. I, I, and this is not me. You know, I just go in and get something if it looked good. You know, I, when I grew up, that's how I did it. She taught me to go try to find the best style of pants. You know that pants are different. You know, he, he likes to wear his pants in a weird way. You know what I mean? It just fits him in his body a different way. So we've went into stores and fit. I, I get at four different styles of pants, and he tries them on, and we decide which is comfortable and which one's the crotch is not hanging down to here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, and I, this was work for me. But see, it's a problem that him looking good brings gladness in his heart. And he's a much better boy. He's 12 years old now, and he's starting to notice. He combs his hair without me telling him to. <laughs> I thought that was pretty good when he started doing that. These four points are simple points. You almost feel ignorant even teaching something like this. But you know what? I'd be willing to do it if it meant some girls feeling close to their mothers. I'd be willing to do it if we had some ladies that would come into church instead of sticking with your crowd. You'd go up to a teenager and say, tell me about your latest fling. <laughs> you know, your guy. They, they love to talk about it. They'd love somebody just to be able to listen to them. Tell me what kind of clothes are in for teenagers. I ask them, what's the lingo? I always ask them, what do y'all say? When, what do you say when a boy's cute nowadays? You know, we used to say they're a hunk. You know, he's a hunk. When I was a teenager, way back in the dark ages. <laughs> Now, they're say, somebody told me that they say they're hot. Hot? You know, hot. He's hot. Ooh, he's hot. You know, so I go, when I'm in a new area of the country and they tell me a new word, I go home and say, Ginny, when they're over in California, when a boy's good looking, they say he's hot. <laughs> you know, that's fun. That's, that's a, a, a rapport that we have. I love the teenage girls that are here. And I love the, the ladies that are here. But I'm just going to tell you the truth. I love the teenagers a little bit more. They have their whole lives ahead of them. And it's so important that all of us that have already made our mistakes are, are putting gladness in their heart. It's very, very important to put gladness in their heart. Still keep training and keep asking questions that will help train their judgment. But let's really, really work at putting gladness in the hearts of the teenagers that are around us.